guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to finally share with you my wedding makeup. So I did my makeup this year just because it was a very small wedding. It's really just for my mom, for anyone who doesn't know. My mom lives in assisted living, she's in a wheelchair so she won't be able to go to the wedding venue next year. So this is our wedding for her and I decided to do my own hair, my makeup, this is what I wore. Everything will be linked down below. The only thing that you won't be able to get is the dress that I'm wearing because it is one of a kind. If you're curious of the designer, she's based out in Miami, which is just such a fun surprise because if any of you guys don't know, I went to school in Miami for three years. That's actually where I met my now husband. So it's just a really full circle moment and be able to support a smaller designer is really incredible. I did my skincare off camera. You should definitely check out my morning skincare routine if you're curious about that. I will have that in my end card. But I do want to talk about a couple of products that aren't makeup related, but I wore it the day of my wedding. So for this, this is is a hair perfume from Gizu. I love the smell. I'm doing a part two of Gizu very soon. They recently just came out with a lip oil, but a shimmering one. So now I'm like waiting for that to arrive so I could do the whole part two and make it complete. And then for my body, I already put some on, but I'll put a little bit more. This is the Lip Tinted Hue Glow in Dawn. So this one is more of a rose gold. They do have one that's more bronzy. I love this, especially for travel because it's compact. It's a liquid. It's not oily. And it just doesn't feel uh, greasy and sticky. So I always prefer something like this event and i've had this bottle for almost three years because you need so little and you can also mix it in with your makeup but i love wearing it on my body and i already put some right here like i said earlier and it just gives you that beautiful glow perfect for summer hands down one of my favorite primers this is the milk makeup hydro grip primer i've had this for maybe a little over six months I've used almost half. I use it all the time. It's so good. It feels so nice on the skin. It feels like skincare, not even makeup. I really like to focus it on the center of my face. So it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to wear because I wanted it to be a soft glam look. And this video that popped up months ago, earlier this year, it was like Asian bridal makeup. And I was like, that is exactly what I'm looking for. I don't want something too overdone, but I definitely want it to look glam. I did my brows off camera just because I was doing a little TikTok video before this. So my two products, favorite by far, I've been using this for years, maybe three years. It's the Urban Decay Brow Blade. So it has a pencil on one side, which I don't use too often. The part that I love is the pen. It's pigmented, but not too pigmented. It gives you those hair-like strokes, and I just also love the tone in Cool Cookie because it's not too cool, it's not too warm. It really matches my brow hairs so well. For brow gel, it has to go to the Unleash Your Brow Gel. This is more, I would say, like a brow cream. It's so similar to the Refi one. I do think it's a dupe. One day I'm gonna have to do a side-by-side. -side. I haven't bought the Refi one in a while. This is such a great product. It was in my spring favorites and I've been using it nonstop. For the eyes, I was going back and forth. Originally, I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll do something peachy, but then I didn't want too much color on the eyes. I wanted color to be more focused on my cheeks and my lips. So I just gotta go back to a palette that I love so much. It was in my yearly favorites for 2021 i believe this is the jason Wu beauty so very affordable this definitely leans a little more on the warmer side i find it to be perfect for me especially for traveling so i'm just gonna go in with the middle shade which is the one i've used the most i also really like the one to the left of that before i apply eyeshadow I need to add my eyeshadow primer by far my favorite Ulta Beauty eyeshadow primer in matte. And because we need this makeup to last a very long time, even though for my wedding it was mm, 15 minutes, if that, and then 30 minutes taking photos, it really didn't matter. If you're having a more traditional ceremony and reception, then I would definitely add eyeshadow primer under the eyes. It's gonna help with any kind of creasing from your concealer. But also, if you are someone that's going to be applying eyeshadow to your your waterline or anything right here. So back to the matte eyeshadow. I love this shade. I use it all the time. 
Again, I just want a soft glam look. I want it to be like my everyday, but amped up a bit and more glam. So what I love doing, especially for my eye shape, and I'm assuming you're probably watching this video because you might be having a similar eye shape to mine. I like going out and up. So you're kind of creating a bit of a wing. Focusing that shadow right here. And then just flicking it up. And then we're gonna make it even more sharp and precise with the concealer. Bring you guys in just so you could really see that difference because this eye makeup look is very important. It's subtle on the crease. We are going to darken it up a little bit more. Since I like how I do my makeup and I feel very comfortable with it, because when I look at these photos 10, 20, 30 years from now, I wanna make sure I still recognize that person and I don't wanna look too outdated, even though some of these tricks are definitely more you know current like even the brows i didn't want to make them too fluffy because i know that's very 2020 like what's going on right now i just wanted something that looked nice with just my features and how my brows look naturally just more in hand and then i'm going to darken my outer corner with this shade again they're all matte focusing it right here the outer lash line Pulling it out. I'm still trying to find a makeup and hairstylist. Honestly, lately I just haven't been focusing on it because getting my marriage license has been such a pain in the butt. I'm still technically not officially, officially married because of my situation. I guess this should be maybe a warning for any of you guys in a similar situation, even though my situation is very unique. If you were not born in the United States, if you had your name changed, so for example, I was adopted, born in China, I had a Chinese name. Um, getting a marriage license is a lot more complicated and I guess just during the time that I got adopted in the 90s, things were just different and I didn't need certain documentation. So it's been a hurdle because I have my Chinese birth certificate. I never had a US one. I never needed one at the time and now I need one. It's like this whole ordeal. I couldn't get one in my local town hall. So I went to the town next to that. I couldn't do that. Went to federal hall, went to family court, back to federal. Then they were saying you could do it online and it's called what is it even called? Citizenship, I'm blanking on the next word, some sort of documentation, it's just one piece of paper. It costs a lot of money, if anyone doesn't know. It costs like $500 for a replacement. For my situation, is it technically a replacement if I never had it originally? So then we were looking on New York State, seeing how else I can get around this, hopefully not having to pay $500. And someone said that you could go to New York City, I live on the island, and you can just do it that way, bring a passport, which my passport just recently expired, of course, or you could just bring your ID. And I'm like, thank goodness, an ID. I thought getting a marriage license was going to be super simple because I've never heard anyone talk about any kind of complications unless you're marrying someone who is not like from here. And since I've been a US citizen for now 26 years, and I've only really known my American name, I just didn't give a second thought that this would be an issue for me. So that's a lesson for any of you guys that might be in a similar situation or you know someone because there was no warning. I couldn't even search for anything online because my situation is so unique. Interesting story, in my town where I grew up, I was the first person to be adopted with the rules and laws that were going on around that time. Like I was the first one to be like documented, which is crazy to think about. Going through that, I should be able to finalize everything by the end of this week. That has really taken a majority of our time because we've been just trying to figure out other ways of getting married. And then my now husband was thinking, oh, maybe we're just gonna have to go to Vegas and just do like a Vegas ceremony type of thing. So I was like, well, if I have to, because what other reason would you need a US birth certificate? You know what I mean? If I go on this many years without it i should be fine right like i have a passport i have my you know id i have my social security i pay taxes so it's just something totally left field hopefully this is the only one thing during the whole wedding planning that's been crazy because everything else has been pretty smooth sailing anywho back to the eyeshadow going in with the matte brown this i'm just focusing lash outer lash right there bring it up just slightly and then back with the bigger blending brush and as you can see it's really important with hooded eyes monolids that you're using smaller brushes than the average person 
that has more of your uh, traditional crease and just more eyelid space. So if you're doing your own makeup, it's just, to me, easier and you can be more precise. And it doesn't look so blown out, especially if you're doing kind of like what I'm doing. It's a smoky eye, but not too smoky. Star of the show has to go to this single eyeshadow from Moira. This is their Star Show Shadow Pot in Sierra 5 Muse. Not too warm, sits right in the middle. I find this to be a very unique shade. So I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm going to just start building. And I definitely wanted something that was going to twinkle, especially if you're taking any flash photography at night and you're dancing. You're just going to look so pretty. And I had to do this first before I did my base makeup because this does have some fallout but look how pretty that is going back in with my smaller brush just darkening up the brown mat and i'm really focusing the darker mat towards the outer corner so it doesn't close my eyes eyes are halfway done we're going to move on to the face makeup so i have a little bit of redness going on so going in with the camo color corrector the green one from elf so i'm using a mix of high end and drugstore it's kind of just how my life is I feel like that's how a lot of us are. Just tapping it in. I will say the day of my wedding, I don't think I had any breakouts. But today, today was a little bit. The best foundation has to go to this one. This is the House Labs Skin Tech Foundation. So beautiful. It wears so well. It looks so good. It's like your skin, but better. It has great coverage. This was in my uh, spring favorites. I've been obsessed with it. I use it anytime I need more coverage or I have some sort of event, anything special. I love wearing that. I just remembered I added a little bit of glow under my skin. So I'm gonna go in with the e.l.f. Liquid Halo Glow. I didn't use too much. I'm gonna spray my sponge. I'm gonna use the Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray just to help with that longevity. Look at that beautiful glow. Now I'm gonna go in with the House Labs. I just use maybe half a pump. Bring some to the under eyes, even though I will be adding concealer. And then making sure to use whatever I have left on the sponge and going down the neck. I don't like having too much foundation on the neck, but just a little bit so it looks seamless. And if you need to do your ears, I don't usually do my ears because from my ears to my face, it doesn't really look that different because I have a pretty good match. For concealer, we need some full coverage. It has to go to the Huda Beauty one. This is the Faux Filter Concealer. I tested a sample of this towards the end of last year and ever since I got it, I've been obsessed. I don't need that much. And this is just going to help with the eyeshadow to perfect it and just clean it up. I'm just going to brighten my under eyes, but not too bright. I think it's only maybe a shade, a shade and a half lighter than my skin tone. I will have the exact shades that I use down below. And as you can see, using my sponge, I'm just sharpening it up. I need to bring back shadow and warmth, so I'm going to go in with the Patrick Ta. This is the She Sculpted Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer. So going in with the cream contour. This was also in my spring favorites. Going right there. Just to lift the face bring back the shadow here really make sure you go into the hairline so you don't have that separation especially since with my hairstyle i just pulled my hair back i was going back and forth with my hairstyle originally and maybe i'll do it next year i wanted some face framing pieces like i love that look it just looks very romantic but then when i did that i just I don't know, I wasn't a fan of it, especially with my veil down. What's nice with having two weddings, you can try a couple of different looks. You do the pulled back look this year, and then do something else next year. I will say, when your hair is pulled back, you just look so snatched. And if you have just like prominent cheekbones, maybe a really nice jawline, you can just really emphasize it when your hair is pulled back. Nose contour is a must, using the same cream shadow. I do it a little bit differently than what you guys probably see on TikTok, just because of my nose shape. I have a flatter nose. And doing that little button nose with the circle on the tip looks very like weird on me. It just doesn't look right. So I just really focus on adding shadow and creating a higher nose bridge. And then bringing it up to the brow. And then going in using the fluffy side and then blending it just like that i don't want it to look too harsh 
are too strong. Again, we want to look back at these photos and recognize the person. Just add a touch more right here just to really create that illusion. Now let's add the powder. This I'm actually going to focus just a touch higher since it's warmer. This will be my bronzer. My skin looks so smooth, so airbrushed. And guys, you saw me before. I don't have perfect skin. By far the best powder I've ever tried. And it's high end. It's the one that we've been seeing all over social media. It's a Givenchy Prism Libre. It's the one that's pink. It does come in a few other shades. I use this nonstop. Even when it's just a casual day, I love it so much because it looks so smooth on the skin. It just helps with your texture. It's great if you have dry skin as well. And of course, someone like me who has oily skin, this is a must. So I just like using a poof and going in, but then really pushing it in. Make sure any creases are really pressed in and good to go before you add powder. I like to focus under the eye. Right now, we're not really doing any baking. We're just setting everything in, all the creams. Look how smooth that is. This side difference. Let me do this side just to show you guys. Of course, around the lips, around the nose. This is where my makeup tends to break the most, especially towards the end of the day, around the mouth. So look at that difference. It's insane. So let me just finish up, do the other side. I do have another powder that I want to test out. Have another chance. Ever since I got on this, I was like, this is it. I really need to try the Huda one that I got. I got like a little traveling size. And then I got the House Labs one because I heard great things about that. And I feel like, well, if they have a really popular foundation, maybe the powder would go nicely with it. As far as the baking, instead of pressing the powder, we're gonna just like dab it. And we're just gonna go like this. And I'm doing this for my nose contour. And then same thing under here, right under the contour. We're gonna let that set for a couple of minutes, going in with the blush. So I was going back and forth. I think I ended up buying five different blushes and I ended up going with a powder blush. I gotta go back to this, especially someone with oily skin. I need something to last. And it ended up being the first one I bought that I was thinking for my bridal makeup. It's the Bare Minerals Bronzer in the Gen Nude in Kiss of Copper. This is so beautiful. Now, if you are lighter than me, you have to use this very sparingly. I only dab it once just because it is quite pigmented for someone who has warmer undertones this looks stunning and it gives the perfect amount of color to the skin let me just show you and it has that glow and since it's a bronzer so blush and bronzer it just makes you look sun-kissed and then i like to bring it up to where that eyeshadow is and where that bronzer i put on just tie it up. Isn't this so pretty? I might just add a touch more right here. Again, sparingly. You don't want to go too crazy. In photos, you might not notice it. It could be like washed out. So just add just a little more. But don't go too crazy. This is such a pretty blush. Even if you're not getting married, the perfect summer blush. I was tempted to go with the cream, but I knew it would just not last. If I did something where it was a cream and a powder, like if I had this in a cream, which would be amazing, I definitely would have done a combination of the two. That blush is so gorgeous, you gotta grab it. Now going in with a fluffy brush, just removing the excess. And this will also help blend, especially since this powder has a bit of pink. Blend the powder, the face powder, with the blush. Because sometimes I feel like it could look so harsh from your under eyes to your blush. But I feel like this powder, since it has some pink in it, it really just makes that gradient effect and looks so seamless. And then I also like to powder my neck because I did apply some foundation. Again, lightly, whatever's on my brush. Just so it doesn't move around and again you're gonna be like hugging people so just kind of keep those things in mind i'm always so wary about it back to the eyes just gonna curl them i will be using fake lashes today i found the perfect lashes although i did have to cut them in half they give me the drama and give me the cat eye look that I'm looking for. My new brown eyeliner that I've been loving is from Moira Beauty. This is their 1.5 millimeter waterproof gel liner. This is in dark brown. It's so tiny. You'll get the perfect cat eye. And I'm going to tight line with this. You guys know I love my brown liner and I've been testing this out. And I even 
cried a little bit nothing crazy i wasn't expecting it and i'm someone who really tries not to cry especially in a public setting because i just don't want to ruin my makeup but my mom said something to me right before i walked down the aisle and she out of anyone in my life is someone who would like make me cry and tear up and just get really emotional and thinking about putting it on my instagram i'm not too sure but her being there for our wedding day just made it so special because i've been taking care of her for the last five five years and i never thought she would be able to attend our wedding because of her situation like i never thought and it's just been my mom and i for most of my life she adopted me as a single parent and my mom if you could really just get to know her and i wish she could speak clearly enough for people to really understand her she's just an unbelievable woman a gem such an incredibly hard worker an example of what a good person should be you know doesn't matter if you're male or female i don't want to get all emotional again but at least you guys will know you won't mess up the makeup if you end up doing this and then i just take it and i just flick it out I just create that wing and because we used a dark brown eyeshadow just blends into it and looks very seamless and kind of again creates that smoky eye so i didn't want a strong cat eye for mascara primer going in with the long comb one another aspect that made our wedding really special is anthony's parents came up so his mom and dad that was really nice to have them and then fred who i don't talk about too often on my channel he and my mom used to date for many years and then gosh i don't even know how long maybe a decade ago they broke up but they always stayed friends and I always felt like that was a really great example of how adults can still be mature and be friendly with one another even though they're not romantically linked anymore but he has always been a father figure to me and he ended up being our officiant it made it so special to have him be our officiant I really didn't want someone random especially since um, we're not religious and next year we're gonna have our mutual friend be our officiant it only made sense for fred to do it so i really loved having him be our officiant my mom being there and it was anthony's idea to even do do something like this for my mom you know instead of just having one wedding to do something really special for her and that's actually what my mom said to me right before i walked down the aisle said some really kind words of how amazing anthony is and just that she's so lucky to be here and to see me walk down the aisle you know oh oh my gosh stop it stop it stop it i'm about to put on mascara don't worry these mascaras are so good if you cry on your wedding day they are my two favorite mascaras Ooh, i'm trying to pull it together um wait no not this one because i've been testing out different mascaras make sure i have the correct one this is the cleo kill lash mascara you guys know i love this one the long curling one specifically so i like to go in with this one first because it's smaller and more precise i'm gonna have to get a new one soon a video that i'm working on is a um testing out all of the cleo mascaras their kill lash because they have quite a few and I own, I think, three. And I think I just need to buy two more. I'd love to test them all out for you because, honestly, I can't really tell the difference, at least when you look at them online. The photos aren't very helpful online. I feel like I'm just blindly buying something. They market them as being all different. But maybe I'll put that video up. I don't know. It's really special and intimate, so I don't know. I might keep that to myself. We'll see. I'm waiting for the photos to be edited. These photos, too, are just kind of for us you know very standard photos i love documentary photos where you're just in the moment and obviously we didn't do that this go around i just wanted photos with my mom specifically i'm just having those because those are the photos i'm going to look back on and i don't have any professional photos with my mom like at all and we never take photos together or just of her she was never someone who liked getting her photos taken. So I'm really happy to have those. Oh, we'll see. I ended up posting. But it was really special. It was all outside. Oh, you know another special moment was the person that photographed our wedding is actually my friend, Shannon. We went to the same school. So junior high to high school. I'm trying to think when we met. Maybe 7th grade, 8th grade? We've been friends ever since. She just recently moved out of New York. And I miss her so much because we used to do 
all these fun photo shoots together and i just love having her she's such a great person and she actually photographed my um i think i talked about it in a different video um we did a photo shoot in miami she came down when i was in college and it was for one of my projects and she photographed it and it's the same place where we took our save the day photos and it was really special you know it just felt like a full circle moment because that first photo shoot she took of me and anthony was the first time she met anthony even though this mascara is over six months old it's still going strong if you need a good mascara that's going to give you length volume and curl you gotta check this one out i'll have it linked down below just to add a little more va va voom going in with the l'oreal telescopic lift in waterproof just gonna give me a little more volume and it's going to blend with the fake lashes that I have. We're just about done with the eyes. Going in with the faux lashes, I made sure to keep the box. Usually I don't, but I want to make sure to tell you guys. This is the Kiss brand Lash Couture the Muses collection in the style Noblesse. I'll have them linked down below. Now, I already used the ones I already cut a number of times. I'm going to use a fresh pair. So as you can see, I only used one lash. They are very... They're fluttery, which is what I'm looking for. So for this, they are shorter on the out outside and then they go longer. But because I'm cutting them in half, it actually is gonna work perfectly. So to create that cat-like effect, and if you have monolid almond eyes, I think this style flatters us the best. It's something where it goes short to long. And then my go-to lash glue is also from Kiss. This is their Strip Lash Adhesive with Aloe in Clear. I find this to work really well. It's strong, but also good for sensitive eyes. Again, shortest side towards the inner and then the longest at the end. Tell me you see that difference. It gives the drama, it gives the sultriness so pretty. I want to make sure my fake lashes look nice and streamlined, especially if you take photos from looking down or if your eyes are closed so going in with a dark brown liquid liner this one is the nyx epic ink liner just gonna gently go over it with the dark brown and make sure this is stuff i really like to make sure i do i don't do it on a daily just because it takes um, extra time but it really makes a difference in your photos because you may see your strip and maybe you don't want it to be so obvious. At least not me, I don't want it to be obvious. Now if you use single lashes, you probably don't even have to do it. But because I have a band, even though it is quite thin, I still think it's a little bit noticeable. And then again, I just connect, it's very thin. Going back in with my Hourglass setting spray. I like doing this before I go in with highlighter just to make that highlighter pop even more. Now, I did choose a more natural looking highlighter. It's one of my favorite cream highlighters. It's from Merit. It's in Kava, so it's a champagne. I've been using it so much these last, how many years have I had it? Almost three years. Just because how natural looking. And it doesn't give you that strobe effect. It doesn't give that like line or anything it looks so natural looking it's one of the only cream products that i use today and i don't mind it because i'm only using it in very small areas and a tiny bit on the nose i feel like that just finishes off the nose contour and then a little bit on the cupid's bow another part of my makeup that took me forever to figure out are the lips so i'm still doing a separate video where i'm testing out all the long lasting lipsticks i'm gonna break it down from both lipsticks to liquid lipsticks i'm still gonna do that for you guys but what i ended up choosing is the one size lip snatcher in shade out of line i find this to be a your lips bit better and the longevity of this is so good i've been wearing this so much like when i go to uh the pool or the beach I love wearing it. Wear is gorgeous. They have quite a few different colors. I don't like to go too crazy on the lips. I just wanted my lips to look like I have a flush of color. I'm pretty natural looking. So for the lipstick, the Rouge Du Jour Forever in 200. So pretty. Another product that I discovered from TikTok. It's definitely on the warmer side. I feel like it coordinates nicely with the blush. It's such a great lip combo. And then finishing everything off with the setting spray. Not the Hourglass one. This one is the One Size Until Dawn mattifying waterproof setting spray if you have oily skin you need this make sure to shake it up really good 
I have the travel size one. Kind of reminds me of hairspray, even the feel of it, and of course the packaging. All right, guys, that is my finished bridal makeup look. This is what I wore on my wedding day. To me, this is the perfect soft glam makeup look for an Asian bride. This is exactly what I was looking for. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Everything will be linked down below. My earrings are from Jennifer Bear. They are handmade in New York. My locket, unfortunately, you won't be able to find. This locket is very special to me. My mom actually received it from one of her friends for her baby shower and I've been wearing it ever since specifically for special occasions. When I was younger, I only wore it for special occasions like my kindergarten graduation. I wore it for my high school graduation, my college graduation, my save the date, and now my wedding day. And I'm planning on wearing it for my wedding day next year as well so that I feel like my mom is always with me. This video was so much fun. If you haven't seen any of my other wedding content, make sure to check out that. I think I wanna post, I did kind of like a vlog of my wedding venue if you guys want to see that i think i might put that up as well if you want to see more from me whether it's wedding content fashion or beauty related videos make sure to subscribe to this channel like this video and i will see you in another one bye